One Snowy Night by Nick Butterworth. It's cold in the park in winter, but Percy, the park keeper, doesn't mind. He puts on his warm coat and his big scarf and wears two pairs of woolly socks inside his Wellington boots. Percy likes to be out in the fresh air. In the middle of the park, there is a little hut. This is where Percy lives. When it gets too cold to be outside, Percy goes into his hut where it's cosy and warm. The animals who live in the park all know Percy's hut. There you are. Every day, he shares his lunch with them. One winter's night, it was so cold, it began to snow. Great big snowflakes fell past the window of Percy's hut. Brr, said Percy. I think I'll need an extra blanket tonight. He made himself some hot cocoa and got ready for bed. Suddenly, Percy heard a tapping sound. There was somebody at the door. Now, who can that be at this time of night? thought Percy. He went to the door and looked out. There, on the step, was a squirrel. It looked very cold and miserable. I can't get to sleep, Percy, said the squirrel. My bed is full of snow. Oh, dear, said Percy. Never mind, I've got plenty of room for two. The squirrel snuggled down next to Percy and soon began to feel warm. It was the door again. Now, who can that be? thought Percy. Standing outside were two shivering rabbits. It's freezing, said one rabbit. We're frozen, said the other. Oh, you poor things, said Percy. Come in and warm up. The rabbits squeezed into the bed next to Percy and the squirrel. There wasn't much room. Uh, could you face the other way? Percy asked the squirrel. Your tail is tickling my nose. Uh, uh. Oh, dear, said Percy. Now there's someone else at the door. It was a fox. He looked very cold and hungry. Can I come in too? He asked. Percy scratched his head and thought for a minute. Well, if you promise to behave, he said. I promise, said the fox. And he squeezed into bed next to all the other animals. Bump! Oops! The squirrel fell out. Who did that? asked the squirrel crossly. Good gracious, said Percy. It's the door again. This time, Percy had quite a surprise. There on the step was a badger, two ducks, a hedgehog and a whole family of mice. They all wanted a bed for the night. Poor 
poor old Percy and poor old Percy's bed. The animals pushed and shoved and rolled around the bed, but there was just not enough room for them all. Ooh. Uh, hey. uh, careful. Ooh. Soon, the bed covers ended up in a big, tight ball. Then, the covers rolled right off the bed and everybody fell onto the floor. Oh dear, said Percy. This won't do at all. My bed is just too small. Suddenly, one of the mice pricked up his ears. What's that noise? he squeaked. Everyone listened hard. Now they could all hear it. There was a scratching, scraping sound. It seemed to be coming from underneath them. There's something moving under the floor, whispered Percy. The animals looked frightened and the mice all started to squeak at once. Oh dear, what can it be? It might be a monster with fierce claws and sharp teeth. The noise grew louder and louder. Then one of the floorboards began to move. Look out, it's coming up through the floor. Suddenly, there was a loud creak. Help! cried the animals, and they all ran to hide. But Percy wasn't frightened. He started to chuckle. <laughs> then he laughed out loud. <laughs> a small, dark head was sticking up through the floorboards. This isn't a monster, said Percy. It's a mole. I'm sorry to burst in like this, said the mole. I knocked on the door, but nobody heard me. Percy helped the mole up through the hole in the floor, sat him on his hot water bottle to get warm, and put the floorboard back. It's all right, everyone, he called. You can come out now. But nobody moved. Nobody stirred. Nobody wanted to come out. The squirrel was tucked away in the pocket of Percy's dressing gown. The hedgehog was in his coat. The fox, the rabbits, the badger and the ducks were all safely hidden away. The mice had even squeezed themselves into Percy's slippers. Everyone had found a cosy bed. Well, I never, said Percy. Ah. <sighs> Percy yawned and snuggled down in his own bed once again. Oh, that's better. Now I've got plenty of room, he said, and a little to spare for a mole. <laughs> <laughs>